Tell you what, if not for the Dark Souls face and the patina, you'd almost swear this guy was an Autobot, wouldn't you? It's Mustard Hoist. You know, really the only time I mess with a studio series if it's 86 stuff, but every now and then there's a Bayverse figure that just calls to me. May come as no surprise, seeing as you know, you're know here for this and we're doing it, but uh, Battle Trap was one that spoke to me. Partly because it's cool to see, you know, a Decepticon, Viacon guy that's this size, but also partly because I'm still not entirely convinced that he's not Dark Universe Bumblebee. Looks wise, he's definitely doing it, right? There's enough different paint apps and battle damage and such finely molded pieces that this definitely looks movie universe, but then he's got armored plating and some car bits and, you know, ye olde car chest. It's all in a way that it feels transformery. The face is definitely Bayverse, but with like a a slightly tempered hand. The over-designed quality that a lot of these characters have is actually working in this guy's favor, especially when the Terracons are meant to, you know, be giving it their best Mad Max. <laughs> On the whole, his articulation is pretty good, as you'd probably assume from looking at, you know, the flying spaghetti monster that he is. That head is on a pretty reasonable ball joint. We can throw all kinds of Gundam-y bug shapes. Shoulders do the full 180. The um, the shoulder pieces is actually two. This is some high parts count stuff here. You know, style to your satisfaction. He then has a bicep swivel, just past 90 on those arms. Nothing for the hand. That hand is in fact molded into the forearm, which you just, you really wouldn't expect on a figure like this. I guess that, you know, thrice articulating shoulder had to have a compromise somewhere. Who needs to twist your wrists when you can adjust your own shoulder spikes? And then I guess all this garbled nonsense articulates, and I suppose you put it where you will, where it's less egregious and intrusive. He's got a little bit of that Leo Convoy thing going on where there's so much happening and the parts you need to recede visually that you, you don't notice when you're looking at him. As soon as you start trying to bust him around the place and he's elbowing himself in the chest, it's a bit more of a thing. Waist swivel, slightly limited by his backpack. Not in any way that's gonna really throw off your posing. Great universal at the hip, thigh rotation, really generous knee bend. A Little bit of backwards on the foot, both ways ankle tilt. So needless to say, this yellow bastard can throw some pretty cool shapes. Do you know what it is? I think a big part of why I'm liking this figure so much is because he's kind of giving me a little bit of, you know, Kill Bill vibes. <laughs> So by way of accessories, he doesn't come empty-handed. He comes, well, about as close to empty-handed as you get. He comes with this, the Funk. You see, the Funk is a living creature, about the size of a medicine ball, but covered in teeth. I will admit it's kind of nifty how it works. Rather than folding away his hand, like you would sort of normally expect to, you can't because of, the, because of the no hand articulation. Instead, you put this on and close it up, like a boxing glove. And they at least had the decency to make it kind of metallic. So it feels like, you know, something actually different. Pow. I came in like yeah. a wrecking ball. Wrecking ball. But wait, there's more. So if that level of, you know, fighting power doesn't quite do it for you, well then you're in luck. Call now and you'll receive at some additional cost, Terracon Freezer. <laughs> oh, that's right, folks. So I've seen that a lot. This little guy, gun. He can be a, a standard gunning station or he can become a, a gun to be wielded. So let's, you know, be prepared to be bewildered as he's wielded wonderfully. Okay, at the risk of getting too far off topic, his backing card being a museum scene um, confirms for me at least that Michael Bay has had his Michael Mayer wash your car for you mitts all over this film. Freezer. Your mere existence offends me, Freezer if he even gets cold that on screen, which I seriously doubt, is obviously gonna be, you know, this movie's wheelie, frenzy, toaster, dropper, all sparker. You know what I mean? Have that role that Alice had in, what was that? Was that Dark of the Moon? Whatever the hell that one was, who cares? But he's obviously gonna chase the human protagonist through the museum, breaking a bunch of stuff. There's gonna be gags like, you can't break that, that's millions of years old, blur. And um, they'll either end up permanently taking him out through human ingenuity or, they'll manage to escape him just long enough for him to show up at the end and die in a 
further comical way. I'm telling you. Look at that techno eldritch monstrosity of a face. And the multiple arms, the chicken legs. This, this is, if someone was like, describe Michael Bay's aesthetic, it's this little bugger. However, saying all of that, I really like this as a toy. He's got so many different moving parts going on. He's really well articulated, really well sculpted. Like what a fantastic use of the core class to have such an insane little robot mode that then turns into a gun for a bigger bot or a little gunning station. I love it. Like core class is expensive, but if these guys ended up on clearance anywhere, I would definitely snafu a few of them. Hell, if they want, if these are part of a faceless horde like I could also imagine they are, give me a couple of different heads and slightly different washed out Pantone color schemes and I'll buy more. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. Walking gun and. I don't care about that. Okay, at first glance, not too bad. It's imposing. The more you look at it, the more you realize it's just a dude in the fetal position with a hat on. But I appreciate the effort. Pew. This is my boomstick to 12 gauge double barreled Remington. S Mart's top of the line. Shop smart. Shop S Mart. You got that? I will be very curious to see if this is something they do in the movie or if it was just a toy based thing. I like it. I do think it'll probably look a little. A little better on Scourge, just because he's a bit bigger, but then he is more of a spindle boy. I don't know. We'll see when I get to him. Pa! All right, with that done, let's uh, let's transform this two-tone terror, shall we? If it hasn't done it already of its own accord, detach the back. Then we're gonna flip out these bad boys and create that light bar across the top. Fold down and tuck away all that arm jazz. Send those arms back. Head forward. Wheels up. Arms down. Take that head, give it the old bendy fold fold, and tuck it up inside there. Faux grill. With the arms folded back, get this nonsense out the way as best you're able. It'll come back into play later. Don't worry about it for now. Pull the hood back, twist it around, slot it forward. Fold that real grill out. Take these arms, push them up with all this jazz out, and tab the wheels. These pieces can be a little persnickety. You gotta get them out. Hook them back around like that. Twist that waist around. Make sure all that arm kibble is still tucked out of your way. It takes quite a bit of bow jangling, but this is essentially what you want for that back bit. Flip him around, fold out these leg pieces, bring them around underneath, like a dead. There, fold the feet down flat, fold out these cab panels, this is along there. Then these will pivot out sideways broken knee style. Pretty well you're going for this piece here into that slot up there. All right, once you've negotiated that and got it more or less tabbed in, then it's just a matter of sliding this back and getting all this to clip in. So I'm actually quite surprised by how small and cute this kind of ends up being. There is a lot of folding, tucking away going on. Some really visible hands, which I honestly didn't expect. I guess because they're, you know, crazy claw fists, they're not super obvious with everything going on. Same as you could pretend that these are, you know, running boards to get up in, into it if you wanted. Maybe these serve some kind of tow truck purpose. Perhaps this even works to, I don't know, tow something, maybe. But I will say, lots of decals, some really nice little bits picked out. Like, that front end is gorgeously decorated. Look at that tiny little GMC, little product placement. It's like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. I do like the double tires on the back end, that they're actually two wheels, not just, you know, sculpted to look like it. And there is, you know, tread decals and you can actually see the, you know, the nuts and bolts and what have you on it. It's, it's nice, it's tidy, but that is pretty egregious and there's not a lot of, like, actual clearance for the wheels with all this stuff happening underneath it. One thing I do kind of like is you can take that wrecking ball and attach it onto this, I don't know, toe hitch. I don't know what you'd call this, but anyway, that can attach there. It kind of, it reminds me of like, you know, a defensive red shell sitting in the back of Mario Kart before you release it on someone sneaking up behind you when they're trying to take it first place. I did also find it's, you know, that Studio Series Bayverse thing of it's real hard to get everything to tuck together and sit flush and actually stay all tabbed in and seamless, but you gotta respect the engineering involved. So he hasn't probably quite lived up to the hype I generated inside my own mind, and I feel like there's really no one to blame but me for that. He is 
still quite a cool figure. I do think like the, the Weeble Wobble backpack is a little bit annoying and you know a lot of people, me included, would probably argue that this level of arm kibble is relatively inexcusable. But sitting on a shelf, he looks good. He's a good looking cat. And just to have a muck around with, fluid motion, well articulated. Other than those arms, he's pretty unencumbered. And I personally enjoy how much kind of like G1 flair he sort of feels. He's got G1 energy. He, you know, is still a bit bug faced, but this feels more like what I think of as Transformers. This is definitely one of those like steps closer to what I would imagine a live action Transformers movie to be. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like it, subscribe it, click it, clack, all those things. Make this monster grow. More. More love. Give me your love! If you think you know anyone who might enjoy my particular brand of nonsense, feel free to, you know, sling a video their way. Alright? Let's make some new robo friends. So what do you think? Who's already picked up this hood-chested hoodlum? Are you gonna get him? Do you like him? Did this video persuade you one way or the other? Let me know in the comments. I wanna talk about it. Right? Hit me up. Let's get nerdy with it. Catch! <laughs> <laughs>